received the Holy Spirit, and we have received the Holy Spirit, to be a believer is to have the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, we wouldn't be a believer. And when we received the Holy Spirit, we did not receive a spirit of fear. That's what Romans chapter 8 says. It says right here, it says, For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit of fear is not talking about the fear of the Lord. Uh, the fear of the Lord is wholesome. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's a spirit-led thing to fear the Lord. We should never take the Lord lightly. We should never at all feel so comfortable with the Lord our God that we don't acknowledge our Lord in and with and through the what the Holy Scriptures tell us about our relationship with God. And of course, it always tells us that, well, you're not the perfect person that you might dream you are, or even that you might want to be, even though you acknowledge that you're not. No, we're always those in need of Christ. We're always those in need of the cross of Jesus. We're always in need of the work of Jesus. The fear that it's talking about here is the fear of the conscience that runs from God. The fear that is self-absorbed. We rarely think of fear as a, as, a, as a selfish thing. But in this case, fear of God is a selfish thing. When we won't pray, when we won't confess our sins, when we won't bring our needs to our Heavenly Father for fear that we are going to be found out or for fear that I'm going to have to admit something even to myself that I'd rather not even acknowledge exists in me. Well, that, that type of fear really is just selfish. In the end, it just serves ourself. In the end, that's not the fear of the Lord. That is the fear of offending ourselves and then hiding or attempting to hide from God. But we didn't receive the Holy Spirit for that reason. We received the Holy Spirit so that we would cry out, Abba, Father. And that's not a special designator for God. That's just Abba is just an Aramaic way of saying Father. And Pater is a Greek way of saying Father. And so all it's saying is no matter who you are, no matter where you're from, you can call God Father. That's what that really means. But the word there for cry out is a very specific word of agony. Kradzo, right? Uh, to, to cry out in agony to God for deliverance. So as we walk in this world, uh, having to deal with our flesh, we do so by the power of the Spirit and we do so not looking to ourselves for that ability, for that power, but by crying out to our Father, trusting him so much as the forgiver of our sins for Jesus' sake that we don't mind at all making him well aware of our weakness and our need for his rescue. We krazo, we cry out, to God for deliverance. And our God does deliver us with every sentence of scripture that promises we are a forgiven person. In Jesus, our sins are atoned for. Therein is our deliverance and therein is our faith and our strength. And therein, we walk by the Spirit. God bless you and God keep you. Go to church on Sunday. It's Palm Sunday. Let's raise our praises. Hosanna! Jesus, save us to the King of kings and Lord of lords anew all these years, all these centuries after that first shout of Hosanna.